John Carpenter's Halloween is one of the most influential and iconic slasher movies of all time. Movies of a similar nature came before it like Black Christmas, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Psycho and even The Spiral Staircase from 1945, but there's no doubt that Halloween took things to a whole new level and set the bar for slasher movies that were to follow. The film is set in the fictional town of Haddonfield and is based on the real life borough of Haddonfield, New Jersey which happens to be the hometown of the writer of the screenplay, Deborah Hill. From what we see in the movie, it's to be noted that Haddonfield seems to be quite a small town, adding to the creepiness. The majority of the film takes place on Halloween night, believe it or not, and honestly, there's no better film to watch in order to get in the Halloween mood. Its creepy autumn time setting, scenery and music are all key ingredients to what makes this atmospheric slasher so great. The film begins with young Michael Myers killing his sister on Halloween night 1963, then jumps 15 years ahead to his escape from the sanatorium where he's being incarcerated. It just so happens to be the night before Halloween. The film then follows Laurie Strode, a student and part-time babysitter played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Throughout the film she notices a man in a white mask and overalls, however she doesn't know whether or not to trust her own senses and is reassured by her friends that it's probably nothing but her imagination. Danny right there. Poor Laurie. Scared another one away. I think these are some of the most scariest parts of the movie as the embodiment of the killer appears in broad daylight, which is rare for a film of its kind. It surprises the audience because the killer appears so early on and so unexpectedly. In the script and the film credits, Michael is listed as the shape for this very reason. He appears as merely a shape. Dr. Loomis, played by Donald Pleasance, is working with the police and is determined to track down Michael. As his psychiatrist, he is the only one who feels he knows the true capabilities of the killer. The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Towards the end of the movie, Laurie is looking after Tommy Doyle, while her friend is babysitting a young girl called Lindsay just across the road. During these scenes, Tommy is distressed about an imaginary entity called the Boogeyman and begins to notice something moving around outside. Of course, Laurie tries to comfort him, however, I think it's safe to say that this only fuels her anxiety levels even further. Adding kids into the story increases the intensity as they're the most innocent in the movie, so the audience are fearing for their safety as a masked murderer is lurking outside their homes. The final chase scene between Laurie and Michael is very thrilling, and it definitely holds up as one of the best final girl chase moments in movie history, in my opinion. The film has a relatively slow pace, which I think builds the suspense effectively for this final scene. Another great way the film builds its suspense is by using the iconic Halloween theme, which in my opinion without this theme, the film wouldn't have been half as successful. Like other great horror movie soundtracks, it became a timeless classic, just like the film itself. At certain points in the movie, the 50s sci-fi classic The Thing From Another World can be seen playing on the TV. I like how Carpenter threw that in there as a reference to a film that he would later go on to remake. It's also an effective inclusion, as The Thing From Another World has a similar eerie atmosphere, so it actually contributes a lot to the film just by playing in the background. Kind of like how Scream used this movie in the background of the party scene, but in my opinion it just wasn't as effective. The film was made on a small budget of $300,000, and proves that not all movies need a big budget to be successful. The latex mask used for Michael Myers was originally a William Shatner mask, which was purchased by production designer Tommy Lee Wallace for a little under $2. Wallace made a few changes to the mask, painting it white and widening the eye holes in order to make the features more impassive. The idea was to make the mask resemble a human's face, but make the design distant from any kind of expressive features in order to make it more sinister. Overall, it's a great movie, and obviously one of the greatest horror movies of all time for many reasons. In many ways, it's the definitive Halloween movie. I rate it 10 pumpkins out of 10. Happy Halloween. Totally.